Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Tegawa How To Series. This time we'll be looking at the Alien Zadrati uh, pedal tuning tool that uh, will come with the Alien Zadrati pedal set that we've got newly listed on the Tegawa Imports website. So, let's jump in. So, the Alien Zadrati pedals are either a accelerator and brake or full ABC kit. So, ABC meaning clutch, brake, oh God, and throttle. So, with this kit, it's quite simple really. Um, they're not your conventional sort of plug and play kit that you get with something like a Thrustmaster or like a Logitech or a Fanatec, but this is more like a plug and then configure and play system. So once you've got all your pedals plugged in, we'll assume that everything is good and we're now moving on to the software. So, what we've got here is the Aliens of Drossy pedal tuning tool. It's pretty simple and we're only really going to be looking at three aspects of it. So the first will be dead zones, which will be these blue lines here, which I'll briefly explain. Uh, smoothness and then lastly we'll move on to shaping, which is where things can get a little bit complicated, but we'll go as far as you need. Okay, dead zones. So the idea of a dead zone is you have to press the pedal a certain amount before it starts registering an input. At the same time, a dead zone can also be right at the top of the scale where you only have to get to a certain amount of pressure, let's say here, before you're reaching 100% input instead of here, right at the end of the scale. So, if we use the clutch, because it's the easiest pedal to push, um, we can see here that all of our pedals are just sitting underneath. That jitter doesn't cross over, so we've got nothing crossing over the threshold going into what would be like a false reading. You don't really want your pedals to be registering an input when you're actually letting off them. You want them to be nil, like zero. So that's why you use the dead zone. So with the Aliens Adrati pedal tuning tool, these dead zones are configurable. And this will generally vary from sim to sim, um, from driver to driver as well. But with a lot of these pedal suites, it serves as a really good baseline. And then you can configure the rest of what you want to do for the sim of the game itself for something like a, a set of course of competition or um, project cars or iRacing, the list goes on. So it's dead easy to change them on here. So let's say we want to have a little bit more of an input before we register anything on the clutch. So it's just a case of clicking and dragging. So I've moved this way up the scale now. So the pedal will only start registering an input once we get to yeah, quite far along the board. We won't need it like that, but it's just for demonstration purposes. So, once we cross this threshold, we have a very small space in between the starting dead zone and the stopping dead zone. This means that all of the travel in between here and here is all we need to get from zero to 100%. Anything more than that is just pointless. Um, so when it comes to actual use case, you're probably only going to want your dead zones to be sitting, or your starting dead zones to be sitting just above where your you know, pedal jitter stops. So I've got you know, a few pixel gap here, brake, we can probably bring that down as it goes. This means that we can have a longer stroke. And then with throttle, it's already in the space it really needs to be. And then we've got our end dead zone here, where we're requiring quite a long input for clutch, which is fine, because you're only going to be jabbing at it anyway. Um, and then brakes, this gives you a big space to be able to feather your brakes and you know not lock up or do anything that's bad that's going to cost you a race or a practice or whatever. Um, so that's kind of it with dead zones. There's not really a lot to them. They're as complex as you make them really, but when you boil it down to brass tacks, there's not a lot that really needs to go, go on with them. As for preferable settings, um, we will probably leave ours pretty similar to this, so we'll have quite a long stroke for the clutch. Um, even though we rarely will use it, we do a lot of GT stuff here. Uh, and then brakes, we've got a lovely long throw for that. And with throttle, I'm going to raise it up just so we get just under. So we have to give a full press of the throttle to get 100%, basically, just about. It doesn't mean we're ever going to be sort of under throttling, so it's always going to be clearing that second bar, so we'll always have 100% if we're flat footed. Okay, so next we'll move on to smoothness. Just as a side note, if you're uh, not running a clutch pedal, because not everyone needs to these days, you can always disable it. It will completely disable it off here, it will completely disable its input, you don't need it, fair play. We'll keep it on just 
just because. Um, right. So, with smoothness, you'll have three settings. You'll have no smoothness, low smoothness, and high smoothness. The idea of smoothness, if you think about your throttle delivery in a linear manner, let's say 25% throttle will give you 25% actual throttle in game. Smoothness will be there to sort of fill in any gap. So let's say you're like a little bit shaky on throttle or a little bit shaky on brakes. The idea of smoothing is that it will even out the input and it will flatten the curve in between each input, if that makes sense. But yeah, so with smoothing, there's not really a lot that goes into it. We'll probably find that we'll leave our sim rig just on low. It's not really any need for us and maybe we'll change it further down the line, but it's just, we'll know after doing some driving. Right, okay, then we've got shaping, which is last but not least. Um, so going back to that 25%, 25% you know, delivery thing, the idea of shaping is that it changes where your throttle is in game in relation to where your throttle or brake or clutch is in relation to where your foot is in real life. So let's say we want a nice smooth delivery. So when we're 50% throttle on the pedal, we want 50% throttle in game. That's, you would just leave this graph like this. But let's say that we wanted, for some reason, no real drive until we get quite far down the, uh, down the pedal travel. That's why you'd use a graph like this. Uh, alternatively, you could have it inverted. This is entirely configurable. So let's say that, that goes to here. This means when we get to 100% foot travel, we'll only have 90% throttle. So it's a bit counterproductive for this, but it's there. But the shapes are all configurable and you will have different preferences um, just down to the cars that you'll be using. But yeah, the, the, it doesn't have to be that complicated, but we'll, we here will probably just leave it on profile one just because it's an even curve and we can modulate it ourselves like quite happily. Maybe perhaps for braking, we'll pull this down just a little bit up here just so we're not hitting ABS or locking up or anything like that. So it just means we can't commit quite as much, but it just means that we can last longer in a race. But yeah. As for the rest of it, these pedals are <laughs> incredibly simple, really. Like once they're all plugged in and you've gone through the calibration and the shaping and smoothness settings, there's not really a lot more to it. Um, it's a dead simple tool. And yeah, I mean, considering how nice the pedals feel, this software is really nice to use as well. And having experienced them in game now, like they're a very, very nice unit. Um, we're very much looking forward to putting some hours on. But uh, yeah. So if you do get any further questions or anything like that, feel free to call us or email us or hit us up on social media. Um, apart from that, that's about it really. But yeah, thank you for watching and uh, I'm Jim Forsyth and have a good day. Cheers.